So Johann Sebastian Joust was a game jam prototype at the Nordic Game Jam in early 2011. Going into the game jam, I already had the basics of the idea because we had already done this Wiimote game called Dark and Sex Game, which is crazy, no graphics. Uh, erotic rhythm game uh, that was, it's supposed to be this kind of like embarrassing art installation, but what we learned from that was like, you know, holy shit, if we get rid of the screen, like people end up looking at each other and we're not so tethered to like one area in the room where there's a screen. And I'm like, okay, how do we take that like no screen game experience and make it more accessible? And let's do some sort of racing game, but let's, let's do it like music based. So it's kind of stop start. So um, me and my uh, business partner, Nils Dinekin, we're walking around the room just with the Wiimotes, just to kind of test the sensitivity of that, like what does it mean to move too much? So we're both walking towards each other. At the same time, we both just kind of smile and like go and push each other. And I kind of had imagined, okay, when we do this racing game, of course there'll be some pushing and shoving. But like after that moment, you know, of course we like broke down laughing. It was like, oh, I get it. Like, Shoving your friends is fun, period. Get ready to joust, go. So we're in the middle of Washington Square Park. I've got a laptop with some small little portable speakers here. There's four people left here. Uh, that guy just got owned. When the music is slow, your controller is really sensitive to motion. If you ever move it too fast, or someone comes up to you and makes it move too fast, the light turns red, it blows out, you hear the explosion sound, you're out. You want to be the last player remaining. Uh, when the music speeds up, like here, you can move a little faster. Both of them kind of got each other out, so this guy wins. It's a beautiful game visually, but in a way that is totally different from what we are used to thinking about in terms of the visuals of electronic games and digital games. There's this kind of spectacle of music and light. And it's almost like human beings are insects. They're like, ooh, light, right? Also, when we, when we first started playing, all the lights were out. Or there was this kind of like dark, you know, mysterious park, and it was lit up by these, these hovering globes of light. The, the, part of the beauty is, is the way it takes place in public and kind of interrupts normal, everyday life and creates a situation. Uh, initially, when I saw you guys, I thought it was like a something like a lightsaber contest. Yeah, we were we were walking down this way, and uh, I just saw lights, <laughs> different colored lights flashing, and it's like, oh, what's that? I took a seat over here, and just kept watching. <laughs> the last time it, I was really blown away it was at PAX. I ran the 18 player build. And that was crazy because we had at least 150 people there just kind of like cheering and going crazy. And there was at some point where it was the trader and everyone started cheering like, trader, trader. Uh, and once we had that experience of the cheering crowd and like people passing the controller around and stuff, it was like, okay, well maybe we have something even more special than I realized in our hands. The plan was never like, haha, I have this amazing game and we will like, like monetize this and make a ton of money or like release it. It was more like, whoa, people like this, let's do something with it. Um, but I'm not an expert programmer, right? I'm a designer who can kind of hack my way into interesting prototypes. The thing is programmers are really expensive. And so, you know, some people do this bull thing on Kickstarter where they like ask for less than they really need in the hope that it kind of explodes and like and all this stuff. Uh, but for us it was like, okay, well no, we actually have to ask for the amount. And the 150,000 was totally like, what do we need to get this project done? And this is the honest truth, like we are not gonna get rich off this idea, it's a passion project. And it's partly a passion project of local multiplayer is important. I think it's been overshadowed by online play in the last decade. I don't know, like I grew up playing stuff like the Nintendo 64, like in a living room, in that kind of setting. I think local multiplayer games are often the funnest games of them all. And so this is, I think, our almost like rallying cry of like, no guys, listen, in local multiplayer, it's amazing, come on. I I've reached this really zen point with this at this point. Like, no matter how it goes, I'm really proud of the effort. I think, um, I think it's the right idea. It's the, an idea that I'm really proud about. Yeah, I feel like this, hey, here's, here's my best effort. Here's what I think is really cool. And let's see if it resonates with the fans.